LSD snail. Take one. Hey folks, today we're watching a Papa 14 Classics 1 Finals game on Time Fantasy, or as we like to call it, the LSD Snail Game. I'm Joe Schober, and I'm here with my lovely and talented wife, Julie. Uh, this was the third game of three in the Classics 1 Finals round. Uh, Keith Hell 1 is up here first. Uh, he entered this game with uh, four points after the first two games. Uh, Steve Bowden and Trent Augenstein each had two points, and Phil Birnbaum was leading with six points after two games. So everyone is still in the running here, which is a great scenario for a uh, finals game. Uh, Keith started off there. You can see he's uh, taking uh, control of the ball in the right flipper and shooting for the timeline there. So time fantasy is pretty much all about spelling time, T-I-M-E. Uh, it's actually harder than it sounds. Well, you uh, just did it, and it didn't seem that hard. Well, Keith makes a lot of shots look easy. Uh, you can see here Keith is uh, doing some uh, alley passes when he gets the ball on the left flipper. That's uh, also known as shatsing the in lane. He's trying to get control over on the right flipper uh, so he can get a shot at the time lane. And he just got a good shot there, but... In the time lane, the letters rotate, so you have to wait until the letter that you need is lit before you shoot it. Yeah, that's uh, part of what makes it really a challenging shot in the game, and it's uh, really the most important shot in the game, so uh, that's part of what makes the game fun. So uh, Steve uh, Bowden uh, starts off here with his first ball. It's kind of a nice outline save there, and uh, gets an on-the-fly uh, time letter hit and a, a good uh, slap save on top of it. I have to say, when I shake the game like that at Papa, they just tilt on me. Yeah, well, uh, I usually have the same experience. Uh, Obviously, everyone's going to have that same strategy if you're going for the time letters. Just a question of who does it best. Exactly. Really, in time fantasy, and that was a, a nice uh, couple set of a uh, couple shots there in the time lane. But uh, really, uh, time fantasy has a few ways to score, but in the end, it's really all about uh, snail time, which is what you get when you complete time. Oh, you've just got it there. Nice shot. So you can see with the rotating numbers in the back glass, that's how much snail, snail time he's accumulated. And it, of course, counts down during snail time, except when the ball's in the launcher lane and it pauses. Right. So uh, Steve's got about 40 seconds of snail time here. Uh, snail time actually gives you a couple of uh, cool things. Uh, for one thing, as long as uh, snail time's running, you have unlimited ball saver. Uh, Steve actually just took advantage of that to intentionally drain because he was uh, trying to get the ball back up top to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lanes. Uh, completing the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lanes actually gives you playfield multiplier during your snail time. So uh, Steve drained again there, and if he completes this, there he goes. So now uh, Steve actually has a 2x uh, playfield multiplier, or a snail multiplier as we like to call it, which uh, he'll keep for the rest of his snail time, which is another 13 seconds. He sends the ball up top, and of course, inevitably, this wastes a bunch of time where he's not actually getting multiplied scores. And snail time is up with that little flash of the lights. And inevitably, right after his ball saver is done, so is his ball. But not a bad start there for Steve. Uh, Trent Augenstein is up now. And it uh, looks like he uh, made that uh, skill shot there. It's kind of a, a fun little skill shot. Uh, you have to time your uh, ball plunge to uh, hit the uh, flashing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that actually spots you a time letter. Uh, so uh, Trent not only uh, has a time letter here, but he already completed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when he inevitably does get snail time, he already has a 2x playfield multiplier waiting for him. It's not active until snail time's up. The nice thing about getting the skill shot, too, is it, it gives you a time letter you don't already have. You don't have to time it with the blinking letter the way you do when you shoot the time shot. Yeah, exactly. Now that uh, time lane is actually uh, harder than it looks. Uh, in the, the video here, it looks pretty wide, but there's actually some uh, metal rails there that make it a pretty tight shot. And, uh, of course, you have to nail the uh, stand-up target all the way in the back of the lane to actually get credited for your time letter. So, uh, Trent, uh, excellent uh, Alhane bounce there to save the ball. And uh, Trent's uh, clearly going on a strategy here of uh, trying to rack up some of his uh, snail multiplier 
and right. maybe trying to add a little snail time too because if you start the snail time and you don't have have that many seconds you're really not going to score that many points sure exactly there's uh, another time letter that the trench has picked up there and yet another and i think he uh oh, wow nice. that was pretty sweet he got two uh Time letters in a row, so uh, Trent's got his snail time now going with uh, 67 seconds to go. And with that completion, he uh, now has 3x playfield multiplier running. So uh, Trent's in a good situation here to uh, really rack up some points. Also, when you complete the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it increases the value for the next time you complete it. And between that and the multiplier, it can be really valuable. Yeah, for sure. So right now you can see the, the lights at the very top of the play field. Uh, actually hard to see in the video, but it's lit for 60,000, and that's for the play field multiplier. So uh, uh, the completion of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, assuming Trent does it in snail time, will be worth uh, 3 times 60,000, or 180,000 points, and that's already pretty good, uh, pretty good money there. So what you're seeing here basically is that time fantasy is all about draining the ball and plunging the ball. I mean, flipping is okay, but plunging is where the scoring's really at. Sometimes that's true. It's unusual where the best strategy is to drain the ball, but clearly that's the case. Uh, and, you know, right there, uh, Trent did uh, complete his 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Got his uh, 4x. I'm not sure what that shot was at the time uh, lane, but uh, whatever. Then drain the ball again so he could get back up top. And another drain. Still about uh, 20 seconds of snail time here left for Trent, so uh, it's actually quite possible he may uh, yet uh, finish 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 again, which would uh, now be worth a base of 90,000 times his uh, 4x play field multiplier. Again, very strange to watch people just draining left and right on purpose. It's nice that sometimes I get to see the experts do what I do, which is <laughs> draining all the time. Uh, slingshot's taking up his time there. Six, five, three, now lane drain. Oh. Right when the time expired for snail time. Yeah, uh, the, the game doesn't care when you hit the out lane switch. It cares when the ball went to the trough, which was obviously right after uh, uh, his snail time ended. So uh, Phil Burnbaum's up as player four. Uh, he was, well, he's up and he's away. Was, Boy, uh, <laughs> the snail had a bad acid trip on that ball. <laughs> hey, it certainly did. So, uh, Phil was leading with six points coming into this game, so really uh, Phil just needs to get a single point here to be uh, in really good shape. And remind me, how, the, how does this scoring work? Uh, it's 4 2 one, zero, just straight up uh, uh, ranking in final score order. So he really only needs third place in this game? Uh, yep. So uh, Keith is back, and he's uh, continuing his strategy of doing uh, an alley pass. Oh, to that the was out lane. <laughs> apparently to the out lane, yeah, that was a pretty rough roll. So. Uh, He's having kind of a rough time here with it. That can definitely happen on these older games. You know, there's no ball savers or anything. Uh, Steve Bowden's is up again and uh, almost completed his one, two, three, four, five lanes. Close there. One, uh, one tricky thing here, like many older games, uh, you do have lane change in one, two, three, four, five, but it only works in one direction. So you can only move the, uh, the lights to the right. Uh, which does make it hard if you overshoot a little bit. You have to flip four times to get the ball back. Or get the, the lights where you want them, anyway. Steve's trying to do the uh, the backhand on the uh, time lane, which uh, he certainly had luck with earlier. Good slap save there. Although I've noticed that, at least on this machine, that backhand to the time lane can be a little bit tiny. A little risky, but... Well. Realistically, uh, both a backhand and a forehand shot on the time lane can be draining. It uh, does aim kind of towards the middle, so you do have to watch it there. Yep, forehand shot didn't work either. It's, like I said, it is, uh, it's definitely a tight lane. Uh, again, some pop up her action there, but couldn't break it up the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lane. But at least if he doesn't complete time here, he's making progress towards it because at least on this machine, it will save the time letters for your next call. Yep. 
Bounce, bounce, bounce. Ooh, that was harsh. Not a bad ball for Steve. He has some setup working for him, but uh, turns back up and starts the ball off just finishing another one, two, three, four, five. So he's uh, again got two X waiting for him. Ooh, nice slap save. And I think uh, Trent's probably going to go back to his post-pass strategy there. Uh, which did seem to be working for him earlier. Usually a little bit touchy, but uh, well, maybe touchier than we think. <laughs> maybe just go to backhanding at this point. Right. There is a mushroom shot over on the right there that could be worth points potentially if you racked it up enough, but realistically it's quite drainy and, and not as valuable as getting snail time as the ball saver, so yeah, absolutely. in competition, it's <laughs> not really worth it. Brent there actually uh, happened to get the ball up into the uh, flashing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lane, so it actually spotted him a time letter, so he only needs the M now uh, to start snail time. Yeah, you don't only get that flashing uh, numbers at the top when you are doing the skill shot. Also, when you complete one, two, three, four, five, you get a, a shot at it. Yep, and there was a great shot yep. by Trent to uh, start his snail time. And uh, because of all the switches and such he's made along the way, he started with uh, 99 seconds of snail time. So, uh, and 2x play field at the moment. So he's really got a uh, great setup here to get some big points during the snail time. That's 99 more seconds of draining and plunging, folks. Yep, nice completion there. Mm -hmm. Trends up to, to 3x uh, play field multiplier here. Well, even the even the pop bumpers there, uh, when you're at 3x, uh, you get a few hits on them. It's uh, nothing to sneeze at, but uh, nothing close to the points he's going to get by a couple more completions of the top lanes. Yeah, he's already at 60,000 in a 3x multiplier. Yep. One more uh, look at that roll he got there. He's doing a good job with uh, setting up those rollovers. Yeah, he is. It's, uh, again, since uh, it only uh, rotates one way, uh, you have to definitely be thinking about where the ball's likely to go and get set up for that. Or some pop bumpers now at 4,000 each and uh, a drain. So uh, Trent's looking good here. When he completes those top lanes, he's going to get 90,000 times four. It's 360,000 points. And he still has 35 seconds of snail time left to do it, which will probably happen. Ooh, Ooh. missed that one. That's all right. These things happen yeah. even to the best players. He's getting, I'm sure getting. And. Oop, oop, oop. Wish, yeah. Well, that was uh, 90,000 times 4. That's 360,000 points right there. If he completes it again, it'll be 450,000. Do that in your head? No, I just copied it. Okay. Uh, he's got 20 seconds left to do this. Oh, some great pop bumper action there. Very nicely done. That was uh, 450 to complete those lanes there. Helped a lot by uh, some good pop bumper action up the lanes and good lane change, too. So, uh... Trent launches his next ball. It's got about 10 seconds of snail time left here and really a dominating lead. It's about 2.2 million, 2.3 million points that uh, Trent has. And well, there's the end of his snail time, but uh, nothing to sneeze at there. Uh, well, it's only ball two. Anything can happen. Absolutely, it is. Julie was talking before about that uh, mushroom lane on the right. Uh, one kind of fun thing about it is um, the uh, side with the flashing orange arrow there awards you the score uh, and increases the value. The score is indicated by the, the little line of orange lights beneath the loop. If you hit it on the other side, uh, not only do you not get the points, but it actually reduces the value of the shots in the future, which is just kind of a, a fun little uh, penalty uh, for not being precise in your shooting. Actually, it looks like uh, Trench was trying it for the loop. It's probably, uh, it's hard to read the, the lights there, but it's probably worth 60 or 80 or 100,000 points or something there, so it wasn't bad money. Uh, Trent uh, finished after a fantastic ball with, uh, looks like 2.5 million points there, so uh, really nice. And pretty commanding. Yeah, he does. Uh, Phil's up there, nice uh, backhand on the uh, time lane. 
Looks like he's uh, trying for the uh, the backhand uh, strategy on the time lane there that uh, Steve Bowden was also uh, working. Uh, close miss there. He's having trouble getting control of the ball. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if you can nail that shot. Yeah, there's a letter. Oop, good slap save. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wow. that was tough. That was a great save, but just a little bit too much English in the machine there and tilted it out. Bonus and time fantasy, you know, it could potentially be worth something. Uh, you get uh, bonus racked up basically from all those uh, rollovers and stand-ups, but uh, they're really not worth that much compared to working on uh, snail time. And uh, getting bonus X is hard. You have to spell fantasy just to increase your bonus multiplier. That's seven stand-ups. It's pretty hard to do. So uh, Keith has his work cut out for him here. It's his last ball after a rough start. Uh, Killing one letter away. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, and he really needed that for the ball saver on the outlane drain. Yeah, those outlanes are really tough on him this game. Yeah, they are. So it uh, looks like uh, Keith is actually going to finish there with about uh, 177,000 points. Have uh, Steve Bowden uh, up now. Waiting to get that uh, M shot on the time lane, and he nails it. Very nice, very nice. So uh, Steve here uh, already has 2x uh, playfield scoring going, and he's got uh, about 45 seconds of snail time now. Our lane drain is no factor. I'm guessing we're going to see him work in these uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lanes and draining and plunging a lot. It's uh, certainly a road to big points. And uh, he'll need to keep at it. Oh, yeah, working that lane change. Good. Yeah, obviously this this one, snail time, is not going to be enough to catch him up, but he should get a fair number of points here. It's a good start. Yeah, good uh, completion there. So now uh, he's running with a uh, 3x play field. Top lanes will be worth uh, 90,000 base uh, for completion and then uh, times the play field multiplier. But uh, right now there's about 17 seconds of snail time to go. We'll see when a player is in snail time that uh, scrolls their uh, snail time remaining uh, across all of the uh, score displays, which is kind of a nice touch. It just emphasizes who cares about everyone else's scores. It's snail time. Not sure why I know oh, his snail time's over now. Yeah, his snail time's over. It's a good slap save, though. And, oh, oh, yep. And when uh, snail time ends, you, you lose that... Uh, the play field multiplier for snail time too, so you have to start all over for your next snail time. Which is probably a good thing, because otherwise it would become even more unbalanced. Oh, that was quite an outlane slam there. So uh, certainly a good ball for uh, Steve Bowden. He finishes with 845,000. Puts him ahead of uh, Keith, but uh, still considerably behind Trent here, who comes up to take his final ball. And he knows he's going to at least be in second place here, so he's in a great position. He is. I mean, uh, I don't think he's going to change his strategy, because certainly Phil can come from behind and uh, uh, have a great ball, just like uh, Trent has had on his earlier balls. But uh, that'd be a lot to make up, for sure. Nice, uh, nice shot on the time lane there by Trent. He's got two of his four uh, letters there. It's such a, a fun shot on the time lane, because not only is it a tough shot, but you do have to time it, and, uh, you know, there's no grace period or anything. Ooh. Well, that was a rough out lane there and drain there for Trent, but uh, he finishes with 2.6 million points. And it'll be pretty hard for Phil to make up here. Although Phil doesn't need to, to win the game, he just needs to pass. Yeah, that's true. Well, he needs to pass Keith, and he needs to pass uh, Trent, too, because if Trent wins, uh, Trent will also... Uh, uh, well, he needs to pass Trent in, in overall match points, because uh, if Trent wins, he will have six points, which is the same count that Phil had came, coming into this game. Another completion, so Phil... Oh, well, Phil has 3x uh, playfield, but it's not going to matter 
And uh, he's going to finish with 164,000 points, which will be just 13,000 points less than Keith. So, the snail uh, giveth, the snail taketh away. It certainly does.